Jonathan going to be down a card here. Jonathan, again, he's on a win tonight. Taking down his first match while Garrett is paired up, having lost our round one feature match. All right, so we're underway. On the right, we've got Garrett Meadows. He's playing a rug call, court of calling deck. Uh, rug super friends, you could call it. It's just got a lot of card. It's rug good stuff. And he's off to a good start. Turn one. Turn one Elvish Mystic into turn two Elvish Mystic, but that's met by a Bile Blight from Jonathan. So the perfect answer to that situation. His opponent, I should say, Jonathan Wright, he's 1-0 tonight. He's playing black-white midrange. It's basically a black mono-black devotion deck splashing white for Elspeth, Blood Baron, and Obzidat, along with a couple of sideboard cards like Banishing Light. So Garrett's going to reload in the face of his opponent's turn three underworld connections with a Xenagos the Reveler getting some uh, effective card advantage of his own. Planeswalkers are not nearly as good against Jonathan as they would be against other creature-based decks as Jonathan is playing Hero's Downfall. But still a good spot to be in. There is a Shocked Hallowed Fountain, so looks like I'm going to fire off a Downfall. Could have been a Lifebane Zombie as well, but uh, Jonathan down to 14 here. Still facing off against this Satyr, so Garrett not uh, completely devoid of action. Though Grizzly Bear not exactly where he wants to be on his own fourth or fifth turn. So there is a Kiora. Probably going to go ahead and draw a card off this, I would imagine. Especially against the Hero's Downfall deck. No, that's probably better. I didn't see that Jonathan had played a Mutavolt, so tick it up. Now the uh, Mutavolt cannot uh, deal any damage to it. Effectively protecting itself as Jonathan digs a card deeper with Underworld Connections before adding... A cave of Koilos into a Desecration Demon. So the Cure actually really good at uh, taking care of the Desecration Demon. But the uh, problem being is that Jonathan's deck has a variety of removal spells. He can plus the Cure targeting the Demon and leave the Satyr back. But it's still going to be unlikely. Uh, or it's still going to be a... Uh, an underdog to get that Kira up to its ultimate. So interesting here, we're ticking up, ticking up Razeric, tapping down the demon, untapping a breeding pool, using it to play an Elvish Mystic, then ticking up Kiora, targeting the Munivolt. This is a great spot to be in, so now we can sack the Elvish Mystic to the demon. We've got Kiora slowly taking up to its ultimate, which is going to be very tough for Jonathan to beat. Arouse Zarek on board, and neither of those is going to take any damage through the combat step this turn. Though, uh, again, Jonathan can dig to try and find another hero's downfall and answer one of those two threats. As we take a closer look at Kiora, its uh, ultimate is minus five, so two turns away from an endless stream of nine nine Krakens. That plus one uh, doing a pretty good job of holding off a couple of good threats on Jonathan's side of the board. So an ultimate price takes care of one of the creatures. We sack another one to desecration demon and then Jonathan comes up with yet another hero's downfall so pretty fortunate draw here from Jonathan coming up with two hero's downfalls so around Zarek minus two is going to deal three damage to desecration demon a Mizzy Mortars is going to finish it off and then Garrett's going to play the last card of his hand which is a hornet's nest not that great in this spot uh, against Jonathan's deck as it uh, doesn't interact nearly as well as some other cards do. And Jonathan just runs out, and Elspeth makes three dudes, and we'll see what the top of Garrett's deck looks like. Need to find a cord here, need to find a Kronos. There's a Corsair. Revealing a land on top, it's going to be a Scry land. We'll play it, gain one. Revealing a Pelucranos. Does Garrett want to keep the Pelucranos? That's the question. Pelucranos is subject... Uh, sub, uh, 
What's the word I'm looking for there? Susceptible as I struggle through the English language. Pelucranus is susceptible to the Elspeth minus three. I think Garrett's uh, debating that now. So question in the chat from John Drew asking if it's been two years. It has not been two years. Uh, on the 31st of, of this month, we, we reached two calendar years of continuous FNM streams. Again, the longest running and oldest FNM stream in operation worldwide. Also, shout out to our good friend Evil Beard, who's joining us from Indiana, one of our longest standing continuous viewers. So, interesting discussion in the chat uh, about Mizzy Mortars on Hornet's Nest. I do believe. As the chat has correctly pointed out, I think you can only mortar a creature you don't control. That is the thing with the overload uh, text. I don't think it actually works if it just says target creature. It has to be uh, each creature your opponents control. I guess they could have designed the card to uh, just nuke the board like that, but I think all the overload cards are designed to be one-sided. That is their advantage. So Jonathan draws for turn, draws another card off his Underworld Connections. Makes three more dudes with his Elspeth as it slowly ticks up to ultimate. Tap three for a life bane here. No, another Connections on a Swamp. That's technically uh, a bit of a misplay. More so in the sideboard of games than in game one. As we see, it is it Staticaster on the top of Garrett's deck. That's a spicy one of can take care of those uh, cords or take care of those uh, soldier tokens very quickly. What he wouldn't give to be able to draw that card right now. So Garrett plays a Pelucranos as we break over a hundred viewers watching live. So thanks again to everyone who's tuning in, and to those of you watching after the fact on YouTube. Garrett struggling to find an out here. Pelucranos has been cast. I don't know if we're waiting for Jonathan to do something in response. He could possibly... Um, he could possibly uh, devour flesh in response, though I'm not sure that's in any advantage there. Not sure exactly where we're stopping at this point in the game. Maybe Garrett's just passing the turn back. There's a hero's downfall on the Pelucranos. <laughs> Garrett just passes the turn back. A hornet's nest, a courser of Cruffix, and an active Ralzarek facing off against two connections, six soldiers, and an active Elspeth Sun's champion. So Jonathan doesn't feel endangered. He's going to go down to seven off of connections. He's going to scry off what I can only imagine is a freshly drawn Temple of Silence. So it looks like, uh, thanks to the chat for catching that, we, we stopped. Uh, we're waiting for Jonathan's response in re response to Raul Zarek tapping down one of his lands, which makes a lot of sense. Jonathan using the mana to... Activate, or not activate, but to cast Hero's Downfall. So Jonathan is scrying, I believe, leaving on top quickly. We're loading up a Muta Vault. We'll send in the team here. Kill Ralzarek. Yep, so Ralzarek dies. We get a 1 1 Hornet, thanks to the Hornet's Nest. Jonathan down to six soldiers, but he's going to make three fresh ones here. And pass the turn back with a Blood Baron of Viscopa in hand. It's an abundance of riches when you can afford to not play a Blood Baron this late in the game. He also has a Pot Seize, which is basically dead as Garrett's playing off the top. There's an Is It Static Caster. There's a Court of Calling. So the 
Static Caster effectively shuts down those soldiers that are currently in play. There's an Is It Static Caster. And <laughs> So Jonathan goes down to six here. If he can find a removal spell for the uh, for one of his soldiers, it will get around this uh, effective one-sided sweeper with the static caster, as he can kill the creature that it targets, and then it would not uh, the ability would not resolve. Bring up static caster as it is an oft underplayed card in this format. So very good with polymorphous jest. Jonathan goes down to five. Cannot find any business. Garrett rubbing his hands together. Feels like he's back in it. Still in a... Still in a bit of a pickle here. But, uh... That static caster effectively blanking all those Elspeth tokens. It's, it's interesting that uh, Jonathan chose to block the uh, Hornet. Well, I guess he couldn't block it because it's flying, right? But, uh, ultimating Elspeth would do a great job of making sure all further soldiers would live through. So, Court of Calling drawn for the turn. The card with the most utility in Garrett's deck has the ability to hard cast it for three, has the ability to convoke it out for seven, likely only for six though as he's not going to tap that static caster. Needs to find an answer to this Blood Baron. Not so much because it's threatening his life total so much as it's threatening to put Jonathan out of range in terms of life gain. So getting some uh, comments in the chat that the stream is lagging. Uh, we'll try and get them to reset the router in between games. I don't want to stop it right now. Hopefully it has uh, sorted itself out. Apologies for that. So Garrett just keeps the cord in hand and passes the turn back with no play. So question in the chat if the Hornet Nest tokens are black and green. I do not know. It is just green, so it can block the Blood Baron. So that's a perfectly good answer to, to the Blood Baron. Again, guys, there's nothing I can do to fix the uh, fix the uh, rate at which we're broadcasting during the match, but we'll get that sorted out in between rounds or in between uh, in between games here once this feature match is over. Not sure exactly what's going on in terms of our connectivity. We often run into the problem where someone is out in the store trying to play some World of Warcraft or something, which uh, eats up on our bandwidth. But what can you do? It is a public place. It is a card store. We do see an interesting uh, interaction here that I completely missed until the chat pointed it out. So thanks to uh, Shibby XYZ, or Shib XYZ I should say. Hornet Nest and Static Caster makes a Hornet a turn. That's pretty saucy. Static Caster doing a lot of work here. I can't, I can't imagine another card that Garrett could have drawn which would have given him a chance here. And the problem is, is Jonathan's drawing a lot of cards here, but he's down to three mana or down to three life. 
he can't really effectively keep digging with these these underworld connections or he's going to die to horde attacks. And there's Garrett making a hornet by pinging his own hornet's nest. And then we're going to convoke for a flying creature here. We can convoke for our own hornet queen. That will give him enough blockers or uh, enough uh, hornets the hard way that he should be able to swing in here through the demon and take and steal this one from Jonathan. No, we're going in, going uh, the value out here and getting Karanos. And if it is a non-creature, if it is a non-land card on the top of his deck, he'll just kill Jonathan outright. It's a course of Krufix. And I don't think Jonathan realizes that you... Yes? Garrett is going to steal this one. Jonathan being very aggressive with his underworld connections. Garrett drawing the Is It Static Caster exactly when he needed to. And a cord for Karanos and a courser on top is going to be good enough to win game number one. So, so Jonathan Wright, he's down a game. Uh, a game that looked like he was a, almost a certain certain favorite to win. As we see him resolve a turn two thought siege revealing Corsair, Stomping Ground, Temple of Abandoned. Uh, Xenagos, the Reveler, Hornet Queen, and Ral Zarek. That's a, that's a saucy grip from Garrett there as he's piloting the rug good stuff deck of his own concoction. Seeing a lot of these decks float around the internet lately. Garrett's a uh, Sleeting up his own take on the archetype tonight, eschewing the young pyromancer uh, strategy for just a super friend's high end, and just a variety of good stuff. So, Elvish Mystic beatdowns continue. Garrett adds a second Mystic to the board. The next turn, he's going to be able to fire off one of his planeswalkers. Jonathan, more importantly, misses his fourth land drop. That usually spells doom in these kind of situations, though he does have Drown and Sorrow in his deck <coughs> after board. There's a Hero's Downfall It's going to answer the Xenoghost. Maybe that's why we didn't play anything during his turn. There's his fourth land. There is a Drown and Sorrow. So, as expected, Drowns come in from the sideboard. Jonathan Scrying leaving on top. And sending the turn back to Garrett. He's now stuck on mana a bit. Does not have blue for his Rouse Eric. Does not have the other other two mana he needs to cast Hornet Queen. And he's now got an Obsidat to deal with. As Obsidat blinks out at end of turn. I'm not sure Garrett has an answer to Obsidat, to be perfectly honest with you. He has three Mizzy Mortars as removal in his main deck. I'm not sure what his sideboard looks like, but uh, just not a lot of answers in this color combination to Obsidat as it stands. So Obsidat beatdown starts. Jonathan up to 17. Carrot down to 11. There's a Sylvan Karyatid as Jonathan adds a pack rat to his board. Let's see how aggressive Jonathan wants to be. He goes ahead and pitches. Uh, and Is it a Bile Blight that we pitched? Yeah, I think we pitched a Bile Blight to the pack rat to so make a second pack rat. Cast another one the hard way. We've got three, three rats now serving with the ops of that. So Garrett's going to take six, go down to three. Nope, going to take eight, go down to one. Jonathan goes up to 18 off the ops of that trigger, or 19, I should say. Garrett draws for his turn and scoops him up dead, not only on board, but dead to the ops of that trigger when it phases back in. So a grindy game one. Followed immediately by a brisk game two as Jonathan gets there very quickly. Misses his fourth land drop. We're getting a bonus stream here tonight because I was not planning on being here. I had tickets to the local minor league baseball game tonight for an industry function, but it got rained out. So Garrett's trying to break back here. 
He's on the play. Both players keeping seven. This turn one thought sees reveals Corsair Kiranos. Two fours, a Genesis Hydra, and a Kiora. Temple of Abandon off the top for Garrett. He's got a thinker and he leaves it on top. So let's see if Jonathan has the turn two pack right here. It's very good against Garrett's deck. And there it is. So Elvish Mystic off the top. Looking for a Genesis Hydra, I guess. Three power Genesis Hydra. Hoping to draw Blue Source off the top so we can cast Kronos or Kiora. But that pack rat's going to start doing what pack rats do best making friends. Garrett uh, can't really block in this situation. And Jonathan's not going to make another token. He's got a better play in a Life Bane Zombie. There's a Pelucranos. Play a Forest off the top of his deck. Kronos and Kiora remaining in hand. Jonathan, however, with a Lifebane Zombie and a Pack Rat. And enough mana to activate it. chat roll call begins. We've got South Wales, Germany, of course Portugal, and Italy. So another thought sees nets the Kiora. Temple of Silence scrying a card pretty quickly to the bottom here though. Oh, Jonathan's thinking about it. Is that a deicide in his hand or a banishing light? I'm not sure. Both of them pretty good against uh, well, Deicide, Deicide's fine, because it does also get Corsair of Crufix, as well as the gods. Garrett plays both uh, Xenagos and Karanos. Banishing Light, of course, answers all the Planeswalkers. So Garrett down to 16. There's another pack rat the hard way. Garrett desperately hoping for Emisium Mortars, though uh, I just uh, realized he doesn't have enough mana to do that. So we can fire off this uh, Plukernos for two here if we want. We can make it a 7-7. Seven, seven. We can kill that Life Bane Zombie. It's going to be difficult to uh, deal with these pack rats. With the fight ability here. So Jonathan deciding what he wants to do here. There is a Courser of... Uh, there's a Sylvan Carrington, I should say. And then uh, kind of an awkward post-combat uh, monstrosity on the Plukernos. Could have gotten in for an extra point of damage there if we wanted to. So Jonathan untaps. He's got four lands and two actual pack rats. No tokens so far. Starts his turn off with a tapped Godless Shrine. We're going to serve in here for four at the minimum. We're going to make a token after no blocks. So it should be six. Oh wow. Discarding an Elspeth. So Jonathan just uh, deciding to race here. So Karanos is going to show up here if we want to. As the Karyata does give us access to blue man. I'm not sure what carrot drew off the top. The Mizzy Mortars would be about the best thing he could come up with, as he does have exactly triple triple red to cast it. But uh, unlikely that he drew that, as he probably would have fired that off pre-combat so he could get in for the full full six damage. And there is a Karanos. Basically a value card, lets him draw an extra card, or bolt something every turn, as I don't, I don't think he can ever turn it on. <laughs> I think the most he can get it up to is four, maybe five devotion. So we're going to jump out of Pack Rat here. Jonathan is going to discard an Underworld Connections to do nine damage. Put Garrett down to one here. There is a DSI to answer the Chronos, and that's probably going to probably going to end it here, unless Garrett can find an answer to that uh, untapped Rat token. 
and I figured if he had drawn a mortars or something else that would have answered it, he would have immediately fired it off. So trying to figure out what he can do here. He can play a courser, but he's dead to an attack from any of the rats. I think he's just going to be one turn short here. Serve in. There's a block. That usually signals an effective concession here. He needs to come up with two blockers here. Needs to come up with two blockers. Does not have it. Don't know what the last card in his hand was. It may have been another Pelucranos. So 12 minutes left in the round. Jonathan Wright takes game or takes match number one. He moves to 2-0 and on the night card. Unfortunately drops to 0-2. His deck is a lot of fun, though. Just seems like a turn too slow, or just uh, going up against a couple of good draws. We see how good Packrat is as a magic card when we can cast, we can discard Elspeth and Underworld Connections, and it'd be the correct thing to do. So, Jonathan correctly identifying that the race was on, and he gets there. So, we'll.